Fundamental to understanding why our climate changes is understanding that we can conceptualise the climate as a system. It is a system that encompasses five key components. The atmosphere, the hydrosphere, this is dominated by the oceans but also includes fresh water, rivers, lakes and groundwater. The biosphere, all the living things and soils. The cryosphere, ice sheets, sea ice and mountain glaciers. And finally, the lithosphere, the surface of the Earth's crust. If we examine these components in more detail, we can discover a whole series of cycles that act as the active links, the interactions between components that power the climate system. There are a wide range of natural cycles, but a really good example that illustrates the coupling between components of the climate system is the water cycle. Solar radiation causes water to evaporate from the surfaces of the hydrosphere, lakes, rivers and most importantly the oceans and also from the biosphere where water evaporates and transpires from green plants. The water vapour condenses in the atmosphere to form clouds and water returns to the surface through precipitation, rain and snowfall. On reaching the surface, water returns to the hydrosphere or if it is frozen as snow, it can enter the cryosphere. Sunlight on the cryosphere can melt snow and ice or transform it directly into vapour in a process called sublimation from ice sheets, snowfields and glaciers. What's key here is that the water cycle is influenced by a wide variety of factors that can be changed by human activity. Crucial to determining the climate state of the Earth is understanding the feedbacks that operate in the climate system. When we consider the dynamics of our climate system, we're not just talking about simple cause and effect. The cycles that connect components of the climate system also create feedback loops, closed loops of cause and effect. A simple engineered feedback system is the thermostat controlling a central heating system. When the temperature is too low, the heating is switched on, warming things up. And when it gets too hot, the boiler is switched off cooling things down again. This engineered feedback is much simpler than the climate system, which has multiple feedbacks acting to regulate the climate towards a particular state. There are three key feedbacks that play a huge role in determining the state of the climate system. Water vapour feedback, ice albedo feedback, and what we'll call the radiation feedback. Evaporation occurs when solar radiation heats the surface of bodies of water. Water, when it's evaporated, is transformed from the liquid to the gas phase and stored in the atmosphere. The molecules of water vapour in the atmosphere absorb heat radiation coming from the Earth below, causing them to vibrate. Then they re-emit heat radiation, some of which comes back down to the surface, resulting in further warming. This increased warming, in turn, increases the amount of evaporation in an amplifying process, which we call a positive feedback. We can conceptualise this positive feedback in a more abstract way by means of a feedback diagram. Our feedback diagram has three elements, temperature, evaporation and water vapour. If we increase temperature, then evaporation increases. Increasing evaporation in turn increases the amount of water vapour and, you get the idea, the increasing amount of water vapour increases the temperature. Increasing temperature increases the amount of evaporation and so on. This is a really good example of positive feedback. Of course I mean positive in a mathematical sense, not positive in the sense that this kind of feedback is a good thing. The next type of feedback that has a significant influence on the climate system is the ice albedo feedback. If we take an area of ocean that is mostly covered by sea ice, say in the Arctic, much of the solar radiation that is reaching the surface 
will be reflected back into the atmosphere by the highly reflective ice, which we say has a high albedo. The ocean surface, on the other hand, will reflect some solar radiation, but it tends to absorb more than it reflects, because it has a low albedo. So, if we warm the system up and this melts some sea ice, we'll still have some reflection from the remaining sea ice, but where open water is exposed, we'll get much more absorption of incoming sunlight as heat going into the ocean. This warming of the ocean will melt more sea ice and so on. I've left the final feedback loop until last, but it's the most important for the functioning of the climate system. It's a really good example of a negative feedback, but again, I don't mean negative as a bad thing. All objects give off radiation, but the warmer a body is, the more radiation it gives off. And when a warm body gives off more heat radiation, that cools it down. We can see this happening when coals get so hot the radiation is visible to us. This is so intuitive we don't even notice it. This phenomenon is known as the Stefan Boltzmann effect, or the Planck feedback, after the physicists who first described it. You've seen in this video that the climate can be conceptualised as a system. It's a system that self-regulates, thanks to a mixture of positive and negative feedbacks. They link together the different components of the climate system.